Okay, tripods. The problem with tripods, of course, is that they get fairly dirty, particularly when we're trying to take photographs of uh, ocean waves out in the desert, potentially, or anywhere where you're likely to get grit or muck into your tripod legs. So we're going to have to, at some stage, do a basic disassembly and clean and lube of our tripod legs. Now, a lot of people get very worried about this and nervous. We're going to just go through this very briefly in how best to service your tripod, tripod to get a nice long extended life out of it. Now, in full honesty, I've already disassembled and cleaned this, but I'm going to do it again and re-lube it so that um, you can see how we basically fix our tripods. Now, one of the things you've got to realize as well is that the twist lock tripod is the easiest to clean. Unlike the breech lock tripods, it has fewer moving parts, fewer things to rust, so it's one of the tripods I also always recommend. This tripod in particular, the um, Sarue R3213X, is highly recommended. I love this thing. It's a phenomenal tripod for its price range, uh, the weight that it is, and the size that you ultimately get. So go for it. This is a good tripod, but it isn't weather sealed or waterproofed. So if you're going to be photographing in the ocean waves, it's going to get dirty. Right, so to start with, when you are working with your tripods as well, and this is something that uh, got mentioned to me the other day, you don't have to unscrew the whole way every time you want to take your legs out. That's how they fall out. All of these twist lock tripods are designed that it's a half twist and then you can get it open. Okay, right now I'm going to put that aside for the moment. When we are cleaning our tripods, the things we're going to need are obviously a little bit of paper towel. Um, it helps to have some other kinds of cloths in handy. You're definitely going to need these quarter inch Allen uh, keys. You're going to need at least two of those to get some of the legs open. Uh, particularly important as well, clean green. Now, this is for the South African audience. You do get similar types of products overseas. The reason we're using this and not normal detergent is normal detergent has an abrasive character to it, which is actually going to damage your tripod, particularly the carbon fiber which is actually relatively delicate so for the same reason that you don't use normal household detergent on your car when you're washing it you don't use it on your tripod clean green will get rid of the grease without any abrasion so it actually works quite nicely um, then you're also potentially going to need a small Phillips screwdriver this particular tripod you don't need it but some tripods will require it um, a small container for your clean green although most of this is actually going to be done in your bathtub some q-tips although what I also use to apply this which is silicon grease that we're going to need at a later stage uh, I use an old uh, sensor swipe as well am I missing anything no right let's move on to the disassembly okay for the disassembly you basically need to start off by removing your legs from the actual shoulder or apex of the tripod over here you'll need two allen key Allen keys for this. At the top, attaching the leg to the shoulder is usually going to be an Allen key driven uh, nut and shaft. So we're just going to quickly get this off. Um, there we go. Sometimes it's a little bit stiff. Right, when they come out, be aware of any brass um, uh, washers. This one is got it still stuck inside here so if I pull it out uh, well I'll pull it out in a second let's get that out so you can see exactly how the tripod runs along there make, make sure you don't le lose any of these and there's the brass washer still inside okay don't lose these we're going to be cleaning them and then adding grease at a later stage okay I'm now just going to remove the rest of the tripod legs as well Okay, once we've gotten that far, you'll notice that the tripod head itself will also have some of these tiny little um, brass washers. Don't lose them. Make sure they also get washed in the process. And then just to make sure that everything gets cleaned, I'm also going to remove the plate from the top of this tripod shoulder. Everything needs to be washed because obviously if it got into some sea, sea water, the salt is extremely corrosive. We want to make sure that we don't lose any of that. Okay, the next step is going to be the actual legs themselves. 
Unfortunately, I don't have the tools to be able to remove the stop here, but just make sure that that gets washed thoroughly in the bathtub with uh, some clean green and lots and lots of warm, fresh water. Okay, now removing the base of the tripod. Essentially, all you need to do is unscrew each of these as far as it'll go and slide out the whole tripod leg. The tripod leg, you will notice, consists of uh, just the shaft. You've then got your lock, and then at the top of the tripod, you have something called a shim. Although I personally prefer the term that's used by a three-legged thing. They call it chicken lips. So these chicken lips, you've got to remove as well, gently. You do not want to break them. Make a note of the fact that some tripods have slightly different guide holes. So these guide holes are going to line up with the little inserts inside the chicken lips themselves. Okay, make sure your whole tripod gets taken apart as well because you don't want to have any dirt anywhere inside there. Okay, so there's a leg section over there. Inside the actual leg lock as well, this will also be removed. Now you'll notice that with the serue, there's a tiny little split. You're gonna push them inside and just remove the entire piece of plastic from inside. This shim is responsible for basically locking the tripod. So when you tighten this, then this is going to get um, tightened. Okay, I'm just gonna speed up everything quickly and take apart the entire tripod now. Okay, so we've now gotten the entire tripod disassembled. The next step is going to be actually greasing the tripod. Um, well, actually, sorry, not greasing. First, you've got to wash it. As I said, this makes sense doing this inside a bathtub of some sort. You're going to use your clean green. We're going to mix it with everything and just wash, thoroughly scrub and wash the, the tripod legs themselves. Now, the problem is going to come in with these. Let me just move these out of the way over here for a second. These fine teeth on the screw threads themselves get jammed up with salt and sea sand and desert sand and all manner of gunk. So the best way to get rid of that is to basically use a fine toothbrush. Don't need to brush your teeth with it afterwards. And because, uh, because they get a lot of grease inside them, we're essentially just gonna go through each of these using a toothbrush dip it inside your, um, your uh, clean green and you're gonna just clean inside each of these until you get all of the dirt out. Okay, now I've actually already gone through and done all of these tripod legs, but this is just to demonstrate at the moment. So right now, my tripod is clean and dry, but it hasn't been lubed yet. Okay, so let me just get that all cleaned over there. Okay, so the next step after you've done all of your cleaning is obviously going to be to lube it all up. For this, we're going to be using some uh, standard silicon grease. It's very important to use silicon grease. Anything that is petroleum based is just going to get really, really dirty and attract dirt and potentially make things worse for your tripod. On top of that, it's going to make your hands filthy. Silicon grease is waterproof, clean, and uh, doesn't attract dirt. So it's quite important to use, to use silicon grease. If you want to, you can spend a fortune and buy the silicon grease used by divers, but standard industrial grade silicon grease is also going to be fine. Okay, so we're gonna use a couple of tools just to apply it, and this is gonna go onto all of my, my tripod sections, basically. So Q-tip works nicely. You can also use other kinds of uh, tools. This is just all gonna get inside there. You can even use your fingers. I'm not doing that at the moment simply because it's just gonna make me very greasy. Okay. Right, once we've got that, also make sure that you've also, so this is the, the top leg section. There's your top leg section over there. Gonna apply another strip of it inside there. 
add this, that which has been cleaned. Remember, you've gone through all of this with your toothbrush and the clean green. That goes inside there. And find the corresponding leg for this. There we go, a nice large one. Chicken lips also have been cleaned. If you'd like, you can add a dab of... Um, let me see, this isn't... There we go. You've got to get the right order inside there. If you want, you can... Oops. <laughs> see, you got to remember your order here. So pop the leg lock on. Chicken lips go on. And then in it goes. Line it up. Slide it in. And there. Um, I'm going to just speed up the rest of this now and record it, but we don't need to hear any talk going on. Okay. Okay, the next step is going to be greasing up these, uh, which we will do, and then add them back inside the, the shoulder. Once this, remember, this has already been cleaned, so yeah. Okay, just stop there for a second, and then. Because I'm a numpty, I'm going to have to do a voiceover from now on. So, first, uh, you're going to have to pick up those tiny little shafts, and we're going to be greasing them to uh, add to the, sh uh, the shoulder of our tripod. Make sure that it's coast to coated nicely in silicon grease. Make sure also that you have all of your bits and pieces together. So remember that there are usually going to be brass washers included. You'll put those um, in the relevant places. You've usually got a set on the shoulder apex and another set inside the, uh, or on the nut and the shaft itself. You'll tighten it using two of the quarter inch um, Allen keys. This can take a little bit of effort or force, but the tripod has been designed for this. So if you want nice stiff legs, you've just got to tighten it. If it's a little loose or floppy, it simply means it hasn't been tightened enough. Remember that uh, the apex of the tripod can pick up quite a lot of dust. Uh, it, it helps if you don't obviously put your tripod down in the sand all the time, but um, you know, things happen and we do put our gear in places that it probably shouldn't be put uh, in the dirt. Okay, we'll just quickly do the rest of these legs. Okay, pause over here. And that's it. From here, we just need to reassemble the tripod and we've got it back to ship shape condition. Okay, so we've managed to get everything cleaned up now. Uh, everything's been re-greased. It's basically just putting the tripod back together again. Uh, the advantage of the Sarue and any of the Gitso um, systematic tripods is of course that you have various uh, heads. So I'm just gonna replace my plate, my head plate on this. Oops. Um, Get that in nice and tight. I've also gone through, I have used the toothbrush, warm water and clean green to clean my leveling plate. Uh, this doesn't need any grease on it itself. Uh, in fact, it'll just pick up more dirt, but uh, there are some, for instance, if it was a three-way head, you could use grease again. Ball heads don't need it necessarily. Uh, they tend to be dry silicon inside there. And there we go. So we've got the tripod all sorted out again. Bear in mind that when you're out in the field, you can't necessarily do these cleans every single time you, uh, you hit the waves or the desert sand or the beach sand or anything like that. So ordinarily, what I'll often do when I'm out shooting is at the end of the day or even after the shoot itself, when I'm back inside the lodge or wherever we're staying, 
I extend all my tripod legs and I take the tripod for a shower with me. Yeah, so you're gonna go and shower with your three-legged friend. It is the best way to remove any of the sea salt and stuff. Your tripod is absolutely fine in water. That's not gonna damage it. It's sea water, salt water and brackish water that is really going to damage it. You wanna get fresh water into all of the joints, inside the, jo inside the screws, up the legs, everywhere and just flush it out as thoroughly as possible when you're out in the field. Take a hose to it, put it into a bathtub, just get rid of the salt because the salt is death to any tripod. And then periodically, especially as soon as you've gotten back from your shoot, like our recent trip down to the wild coast, strip the tripod, get it greased, clean it up, and you will have many years of use with your tripod. Don't do it and it'll last about a year. Okay. That should be uh, easy enough to follow. If you have any questions, you can email us at uh, email at natureslight.co.za. You can also drop me a phone call if you're in the area. Um, I'm also happy to help out any locals if you'd like to take a quick look at how to do this. Otherwise, hopefully catch you again soon. Cheers.